Good morning, guys. Um, exciting day because my suspension will today be replaced on the cruiser with the full Super Pro uh, fulcrum suspension setup. Graham from fulcrum suspension and chain arrived and uh, we're gonna start the day. That is the last time you see the cruiser as it is now. Okay, Shane, if you want to run us through, what are you guys going to do first? Okay, so what we're doing is we're currently just doing some pre-checks on the car before we actually do any work to it, do the lift up. What we're right now, we're actually just checking the tyre pressures and we're also checking the rear wheel alignment to make sure that the thrust angle on the car is pushing straight. Okay, so every vehicle that comes in gets a job card. This yep. is what we call our Fulcrum Suspension Safety Inspection Report. Okay, so what we do is we actually go around the car and we have a look at the tyre wears and mm -hmm. we check them off. So we go over your front suspension, your steering, your rear suspension and your brakes, including your swivel hub bearings and your wheel bearings okay. and tyres. Mm -hmm. Everybody talks about heights, heights, heights. The only piece of equipment that doesn't lie when it comes to heights is a measuring tape. Mm -hmm. So any four-wheel drive suspension system must have measurements. We do three measurements. The, the most critical one is that one, centre of hub to guard. Mm -hmm. That does not change regardless of wheel and tyre. So yep. that can be transported anywhere around the world, around the country, anywhere. So this is the package we're putting in the rear of the 100 series today. What we're, what we're doing is with some lifted springs, some Bilstein shocks. We've got some trailing arms and pennard rods here that have already been bushed with Supro bushes, ready to go straight in the car. We've also got some extended Supro links and some D bushes, ready to go straight in. When this is all installed, this should firm up that rear end, get rid of that wallowiness and drive true on the road. The original equipment sway bar is designed to link the sway bar when the vehicle is at normal ride height and original equipment. But on full droop and sitting on the hoist here, the axle is actually full vertical droop. It's not in side droop or your droop, but it's at least in full droop. And the sway bar link does a certain percentage to holding it up. Mm -hmm. Our replacement Super Pro bushing link is simply stronger and longer. I pointed out the difference in the longer uh, sway bar link. Not only is it going to be longer, but it's got to flex around and walk around so when we're going off road and dropping wheels it's got to move. So using the basic hand test that's got about that much movement. But the design has had some thinking to make the polyurethane work correctly. First of all the bushings where they mount have got a nice taper. The washer turned upside down so the whole thing can roll and work. Applying the same basic test again it's easy enough to rock and roll around. It is probably 10 or 15% stiffer than the other side, but this is brand new. That's done hundreds of thousands of kilometres. Comparing shock absorbers that come from the vehicle and what is going to be fitted to the vehicle. The basic purpose of a shock absorber is to keep the wheel firmly planted on the ground. When the wheel hits a bump and at speed, it simply wants to leave the ground. A good damper will make sure the tread follows the ground correctly and carefully. On road, off road, anywhere. We need to keep that tyre for traction. Now original equipment shock absorber is a twin tube shock absorber. Toyota, these particular ones on this vehicle, done a lot of kilometres. We test drove this vehicle this morning, feels quite soft. It is quite good technology, it's a twin tube gas pressure shock absorber and when you push it down, which is not a test, it's still got a lot of good gas pressure in it. But the valve coating is built to a world mass market. It's built to fit every part of the world where the car is sold and is normally on the soft end for comfort. Our replacement damper is the monotube Bilstein technology. 
The original monotube was invented by a Dr. De Carbon in Germany and perfected by Bill Stein and sold by many companies around the world. The piston is a 46 millimeter piston inside and designed for long travel suspensions in original equipment cars and that's what this vehicle is. It's a long travel coil sprung suspension. Because we're lifting this vehicle, we've increased the travel of the shock absorber. In other words, we've increased the length by about 45 millimeter. That gives the wheel a little bit more droop. That distance is controlled because every time you increase extended length, you also increase the compressed length. So the compressed length on this shock absorber and this shock absorber is about the same. So it does not bottom out and force and destroy the shock absorber. The wall of this shock absorber is very thick, two and a half millimetre steel, and will take an absolute pounding. Springs. I mentioned that the action of a shock absorber, the only reason a car has a shock absorber is to keep the wheel firmly on the ground. Well, the only need for a spring is to hold the car up, hold the load up. It actually takes all the effort and controls the body roll and controls the load we should put in it. Original equipment spring, very good spring, again in this case, built for a world market, built for a mass market, built to last a long life. Replacement spring, first of all, not much heavier. When we want articulation, when we want off-road, when we want long travel, we don't want to stiffen the suspension up too much, otherwise the wheels simply won't move up and down. So the replacement spring has got an increase in height to lift the vehicle up, which is what we're trying to achieve with this vehicle, and an increase in spring rate so it'll carry more load. Because the vehicle is going to be lifted and then using a cumulative rate to carry the load, when the spring comes back under load, it will drop down quite a distance and sta stabilise the vehicle. This is a bush that's old as a car. If we take the original control arm, good piece of unit, original equipment bushings, done 200,000 kilometres, and we'll do a simple test to check how much side flex they've got, and plenty of side flex like so. The bonding of the rubber is quite resistant when trying to turn like so. That's a disadvantage on the long travel droop suspension. We want the suspension to drop freely, so the rubber bonding actually resists that. We'll now just simply do a simple same test on the control arm with the Super Pro bushing in it. Side flex is a little bit less than the rubber one. Yes, definitely is. But then again, it is brand new and that's done 200,000 kilometers. But the real strength is nice free floating technology. The arm will just drop smoothly without any load backup. All right. So what we've got here is we've got the, the, the raised springs, the Bilstein shocks and Super Pro bushes all ready to go in the front here. What we'll do is we're going to install this. The caster change that we're going to do is a little bit of a surprise. We'll leave that for later on. The last, second last part of today's uh, installation process is to correct the caster on the vehicle, correct the wheel alignment, and the last part will be actually set the wheel alignment. Setting an accurate wheel alignment on a, any vehicle simply saves tyre wear and makes the car pleasurable to drive. When you raise a vehicle, it actually physically raises this position, changes the angle through the front pickup points, and what I use washes off caster. Caster is the stability steering angle in a vehicle. There's several ways of correcting that caster change. If the vehicle's only been lifted about 50 mil, we have an offset Super Pro bushing that fits into this arm here. Another way of correcting the caster is the Polyolas Complete Replacement Control Arm. This arm, which is welded reinforced steels, strengthened internally with a patented idea, supplies an arm lighter weight than original equipment and stronger. The key thing that it does do is it changes the positioning of the pickup points at the front here to roll back the axle around the centre point to restate the caster. This arm also comes with other couple of attributes. First of all, the polyolas bushings, by their sheer design, have as much flex as original equipment rubber bushings. These rubber bushings are old, flexible, these are actually more flexible and brand new. 
so they will not retract from any off-road flexing. The other thing is the rear Super Pro polyurethane rear mount, which is the strategic mounting position, comes with an offset tube. This offset tube does two important things. One, you can actually give it a little bit more caster change by setting it, or two, today we did identify this car pulled left. We also, on the wheel line, we identified it had some offset, and the way to correct that offset is to position this tube in this arm to move the left-hand side slightly forward and negate that any offset to get the car to steer straight. So by fitting our polyelast arm with the highly flexible polyelast bushings, which are of the synthetic rubber, uh, backed up by our Super Pro polyurethane rear bush and offset tube, we'll be able to dial in the right cast we want and dial in the offset so the car steers straight. That looked to zero too. Yeah, it is. It's got, if anything, maybe... Morning we had two and a half and two and five eighths casters with a setback on the left hand side of one to one and a half mil. We fitted the polyelast caster arms. Before we fitted the caster arms with the four inch lift, which it has come up four inches today, it had minus five degrees caster. Yeah, no. The polyelast arms are designed for three, two inch and three inch lifts. This kit has a four inch lift waiting for all the weight to go on it to drop it back to three, three and a half inches, which will change the caster setting. Fitting the new arms, we've taken it to a plus eighth of a degree in caster which professionally and technically to me is still a little bit too low but we'll re-measure it when we drop the car with the bull bar and the winch and the goodies on the top of it and the car sinks back roughly an inch lower. I believe at that point it'll be up 1.8 to 2 degrees which is ideal. Perfect. All done. Lift is in. Caster corrected and um, yeah I'm keen to see how it drives. My first drive. Oh yeah. Feel it already. Just with the small bumps in the road. Yeah, it feels good. It's driving straight now, which is a plus, and far more precise steering. What a difference! Nice. Yeah, obviously, that's only a short uh, drive around the block here, but so far very impressed that's uh, the outcome I was hoping for obviously you got to see uh, how it flexes and how it does off-road but the on-road behavior uh, is greatly improved okay so we got the lifted spring here we've got the panard rod with the with the super pro bushes in it we've also got the sway bar here with the super pro bushes in it Come through underneath here. What we've got here is got the extended Supro links for the rear, the Bilstein shocks. We've got the Supro bushes in the trailing arms. Also, both sides obviously. What we've got here is the Supro lift correction arms with the Supro bushes in the rear of it for setback and also the the the, the um, poly last bushes in the front. We've also got the, the sway bar spaces for the front. That way we've got that clearance. We've got the sway bar bushes in the, in the end of there, and the Super Pro also, just there. Then we've got the Bilstein shocks in the front, and the lifted springs as well. The other thing we have, which we need to come around here to have a look at, is actually the front pan art as well, with the Super Pro bushes in.